In this video, let's talk about how to calculate volumes, earthwork volumes between two surfaces, and more importantly, how to account for the material depths that are our surface coverings for our design, be it paving or concrete or having six inches of topsoil. Trait analysis of two surfaces will yield a number, but it will not account for that. So let's go through this and talk about how to create us a datum surface that is the bottom of all of those buildups so we can get a true earthwork number. Quick tour of this drawing is we've got a surface here called topo that represents our existing grade. We have a surface here that is called pad, just a simple pad uh, with a fill slope in it. <clears throat> Now, standard volume analysis, just comparison of two surfaces, can be done by going to Analyze in the Volume Dashboard and hitting Create a Volume Surface. And I will name this one Volume Finish Grade versus Existing Grade. I'll set my base surface to my topo, and I'll set our comparison surface to pad. And it will yield us a number. So it should be around 4,800 cubic yards of fill material. Now this is between those two surfaces, as we just mentioned, does not account for any uh, materials that we will have on our surface treatments. So let's say we want this pad to be a six inch concrete pad and beneath it's going to be six inches of aggregate. And out here on these earthen slopes, we want to put six inches of topsoil. So we need to get this area to be six inches below and this to be one foot below the surface we have here. So how do we do that? We're going to create some dummy surfaces and it's a pretty convoluted process. It's not overly complicated, but it can become cumbersome trying to keep up with everything. So to get started, first thing we need to do is create us some closed polylines that represent the areas different areas and different thicknesses. So in my, our case, we've only got two. We're going to lower the fill slopes by six, and we're going to lower this pad by a foot. So I already have the feature line that was used to create the pad and a 3D poly line that's out here that represents the tie slope. I'm going to select those and isolate them so I can get some stuff off my screen. And what we want to do is we are going to create some closed polylines. Let me change my layer real fast. Uh, for the purpose of this demo, I'll just make a new layer real fast. Sure, that'll work. Make it my active layer. All right, we're going to use a command called boundary. And what we're going to do is click inside of one of these areas and it will color it in, as you can see, any closed area. When I hit enter, it will create a polyline. Now, this is not a 3D poly. It is a polyline, so it's at one elevation. That's fine, and it's set at zero right now. We'll come. Let's do the same thing here. Cannot be determined. And you will sometimes get that error when you have things that are a donut. So let's a little bit of a cheat here. Let's break this into two halves and let's run the boundary command again. And let's pick inside of this. And it doesn't seem to like that 3D poly, so let's take it and let's convert it to a 2D. I can't just convert it because it's part of my surface, so we're going to make a duplicate of it real fast. Right there, I'm going to select the one I just did. And we're going to come up here to grading polylines, convert to 2D polyline. Now, I'm going to keep these breaks here because of the island. We need to have closed shapes. And if you tried to create a boundary of this, you'd actually have two different, you'd have a donut. So we need closed shapes. So we're going to have two. Let's run the boundary command again. And now we've got that side. And one more time for down here and this side. Okay, now <clears throat> we've got closed shape here, a closed shape here, and a closed shape here that are all on polys. Now the problem is that Civil 3D does not like vertical walls, if anyone's done any servicing and knows that. So we need to offset the 
interface between any two points that are of different elevations by a little bit so that we don't have a vertical wall. So let's um, select this polyline that's here. We're going to offset it by 0.1 to this side. Now we've got one. And for a little data cleanup, I'm going to get rid of, zoom out so I can see, get rid of that one. So now we've got us an infinitesimally small spot. Now what we want to do is set the elevation of each one of these by the offset of our thickness, but it's going to be a positive number. Even though it's down, we want it as a positive number. Now remember we said the grass areas, we're going to do six inches down. So I'm going to select that and we're going to get an elevation of 0.5. And we'll do the same thing for this one. And then we'll choose the pad and we'll do one. <clears throat> now that we've gotten that, we want to make a surface out of these. So let's come over here and let's make us a new empty surface. And let's call this uh, upgrade temp. This is a temporary intermediate step surface. And I'm going to change this to require. Now these are going to be very close to zero because it's only elevation of one and 0.5. So keep that in mind. And while we're at it, since we made that, let's go ahead and make us another folder here and call it subgrade. And I'm going to take the subgrade temp and I'm going to put it in my subgrade folder just for some housekeeping. Now with that made, let's select these and let's add them to our surface. I'm going to add them as contours because they're all one elevation. And I'm going to uncheck all these flattenings. I don't want it to do anything. Hit OK. Now that that's done, looks like something didn't. Oh, because I had <laughs> my mistake. We're going to individually select these polylines. I grabbed that feature on accident in there. Now let's add them to our contours. There we go. <clears throat> so let's end our object isolation. And they were drawing real fast. I always say before I do anything. Special. Oops. Now that's done, let's select that surface, our subgrade, and let's select our pad. And let's view them in Object Viewer. Now they should both be very far apart. So if I tilt that over, I can see they are very far apart. You can see that vertical wall on our other one. So we've got, we made sure that's done that way. Now for the, the magic. Keep in mind that when you do volume surfaces, it subtracts one surface from the other to create the isopoc volume surface. So we're going to use that to create our datum by lowering our design foot design surface by the amount that we set in our temp surface by creating a volume surface again. So we're going to go to analyze and volume surface. I'm going to make another one. This is going to be volume subgrade. You'll see why I call it volume in a second. <clears throat> and uh, let's change our style to our required. Our base surface is going to be our temp. And our comparison surface is going to be our pad. So it's going to say, in our case, 1 minus 220. The difference between 1 and 220 is 219. That's what it's going to do. So let's hit OK. And now, if I select Pad, 
upgrade temp and that new volume surface and do object viewer <clears throat> tilt it over again I only see two surfaces but which is good because the other one is very close to it right you can kind of see it if I tilt it over you can look under it you can see that surface which is good it means we did it we did the order right it's always good to do this because sometimes you'll get that order wrong and uh, you'll have a surface down here in between them which you know will be wrong so now that we've got that we want to run earthwork volumes the problem is is you cannot run volumes of a volume surface see how it has a very specific icon it knows that it is something else so we can't run analyze and use that as a comparison surface so we have to make one more surface so um, let me pull close that let's pull this into our subgrade and now let's make us a new and this part's really easy we're going to make us another new surface and we're going to call it just subgrade Required again and this time we're going to take our subgrade surface put it in my subgrade section and we're just going to paste that volume surface into it so I'm going to expand it come down here to our edits right click and I am going to paste the surface and this paste the volume subgrade into it and now I've got a, uh, a true surface just a tin notice that the icon is different now that I've got that, I can do earthwork. One more again. Do volume. Subgrade versus existing grade. And in this case, I don't want to see anything. And we'll change our base to topo and our comparison to subgrade. You can see we went from 4,800 to 3,800, a thousand yards difference between the two by doing that. So doing these convoluted steps allow you to get you a datum surface that you can use for more accurate earthworks. You can have as many areas as you want and as many thicknesses. You just keep up with them. Create close polylines. Make sure they are have an offset. They don't overlap where there are two different elevations. Create you a volume surface, create you a dummy surface, create you a volume surface, and then compare the two. Sounds complicated. But uh, that's it for this video. Hopefully that'll get everybody on board for how to do this. And if you like this content, please click the like button. Feel free to subscribe and uh, leave comments if you saw something I've done wrong or if you have something you'd like me to post about.